Welcome back, mitochondriacs, for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. Today, we are going to continue our journey and our adventure into the inhibition of glutamine as a strategy to inhibit the important reliance on glutamine by cancer, but in particular, its reliance on the excess glutathione that is required to maintain redox homeostasis or to protect itself from ferroptotic cell death. And we've been recently talking about this SLC7A11, which has been described as the Achilles heel of cancer. And if you're new to this channel, and this is the first video that you've seen, this may be a very difficult place to start. If you are starting this video, we welcome you. But this is, you know, about video 61 and the series of cancer as a mitochondrial metabolic disease. And it may be beneficial to watch a video first or even several videos first, in particular, the video, how metabolic therapy checkmates cancer could be a good place to start as it gives a fairly comprehensive overview of metabolic therapy. But without further ado, let's get started on today's video. So I'm going to start out with a very important compound that we have not yet covered, and that is called Ariston. And... Ariston is something that you may have noticed in the classic graphic that is one of the main compounds that has been shown to block SLC7A11. But we have not actually gone over the compound yet, and I want to go over it quickly before I start touching on some of the other compounds that can be potentially used as therapy. So this paper is titled How Ariston Assassinates Cells by Ferroptosis Revealed. It says that here that Ariston is the most widely used ferroptosis inducer in research. And Ariston and its analogs such as imidazole, ketone Ariston, have been explored as anti-cancer drugs by triggering ferroptosis and cancer cells. Although Ariston has poor metabolic stability and solubility in vivo, limiting its ability to induce ferroptosis and tumors, the design of Ariston analogs with improved potency and metabolic stability in vivo would improve its potential application as an anti-cancer drug but require a deeper molecular understanding of Ariston-mediated inhibitory effects of the system XC, aka SLC7A11. However, the structural base of Ariston inhibits system XC has remained a mystery. On the 10th anniversary of the discovery of ferroptosis, this mystery was recently solved by Yen et al. through cryo-electron microscopy analysis of the structure of Ariston-bound SLC7A11, SLC3A2 complex. So as we can see here, we have the, at this point, very well-known SLC7A11. And we see that, you know, glutamine or glutamate in this case is being transported outside the cell and cysteine is being transported in. That's why they call this an anti-porter because they were losing one and gaining the other. And cysteine is being combined with the excess glutamine found in cells with the addition of glycine to form glutathione. And glutathione is going to help prevent the lipid peroxidation and ferroptosis. This is a mechanism that we, at this point, now well understand. Just so we all understand where this happens at, Ariston has been here the entire time. We just haven't actually had a chance to cover it. And the reason I bring this up is because the next compound that I wanted to discuss, butyrate, talks about Ariston in both the papers. So I just wanted to at least cover what that was prior to covering butyrate's activity on inducing ferroptosis. And this paper is titled Butyrate Enhances Ariston-Induced Ferroptosis of Osteosarcoma Cells Via Regulating This ATF3 SLC7A11 Pathway. And it says here that mechanistically sodium butyrate downregulated SLC7A11 transcription via regulating ATF3 expression. Overexpression of ATF3 facilitated Ariston to induce ferroptosis, while an ATF3 knockout attenuated sodium butyrate induced ferroptosis sensitivity. In conclusion, our findings revealed that previously unidentified role of sodium butyrate in Ariston induced ferroptosis by regulating SLC7A11, suggesting that sodium butyrate may be a potential therapeutic agent for osteosarcoma treatment, which is a very serious bone cancer. And then in this second paper, titled Butyrate Enhanced Ariston-Induced Ferroptosis of Lung Cancer Cells by Modulating, again, the same pathway, this ATF3 SLC7A11 pathway. And it says, ultimately, that collectively, our findings indicate that butyrate enhances Ariston-induced ferroptosis in lung cancer cells by modulating ATF3 
SLC 7A11 pathway, suggesting its potential as a therapeutic agent for cancer treatment. The next paper I want to cover is titled Sodium Butyrate Induces Ferroptosis in Endometrial Cancer Cells via this RBM3 SLC 7A11 axis. And it says here that in this study, sodium butyrate was identified to inhibit the progression of endometrial cancer in vitro and in vivo. Mechanistically, RBM3 has a binding relationship with SLC 7A11 mRNA, messenger RNA. Sodium butyrate indirectly downregulates the expression of SLC 7A11 by promoting the expression of RBM3 thereby promoting ferroptosis in endometrial cancer cells. In conclusion, sodium butyrate can promote the expression of RBM3 and indirectly downregulate the expression of SLC7A11 to stimulate ferroptosis, which may be a promising cancer treatment strategy. And just kind of like going over this graphic here, we see that, you know, sodium butyrate is being added to this cell and it is essentially downregulating the expression of this SLC7A11. Remember, we have RNA that is going to be translated to a protein, and the protein is named SLC7A11 or XCT, this glutamine cysteine antiporter. And basically, it's not necessarily blocking it directly, like inhibiting its use once it's translocated to the cell membrane. It's actually inhibiting it from being expressed altogether and just downregulating the amount of SLC7A11 on these cancer cells, which has a negative effect on glutathione synthesis and ultimately leads to a ferroptotic cell death for these endometrial cancer cells. And then finally, rounding out butyrate as a ferroptosis activator is this paper titled, Butyrate Attenuates the Stemness of Lung Cancer Cells Through Lysosome, Iron, and SLC7A11-mediated ferroptosis. And what it says here is we identified that butyrate predominantly localized in the lysosome and concurrently recruited iron in the lysosome. Moreover, butyrate reduced the stability of SLC7A11 protein stability in lung cancer cells through ubiquination and proteasome degradation. Importantly, the effects of butyrate on lung cancer stem cells were found to be dependent on lysosome iron and SLC7A11 mediated ferroptosis. In summary, our results demonstrate that butyrate can induce the ferroptosis in lung cancer stem cells by recruiting iron in lysosome and promoting the ubiquination lysosome degradation of SLC7A11 protein. So I think what is important to highlight in this particular study is that we're talking about lung cancer stem cells now. We're not talking about the highly proliferative cells that are kind of somewhat easy targets for even conventional therapies. But we're talking about the non-proliferating, the more senescent cancer stem cells, which have the propensity to survive both chemotherapy, radiation, and other conventional therapies and confer resistance to their progeny and lead to resistant metastatic spread of cancer. And what we have seen in prior videos, in particular talking about the Warburg metabolism during the dichloroacetate video is that there is no difference between a proliferating cancer cell and a cancer stem cell. They both rely on Warburg metabolism, aka they rely on glucose and glutamine. So if we are able to affect the glucose and glutamine pathways of the, either of these cancer cells, we can have victory over them utilizing the same strategies. However, another exciting thing is that these cancer stem cells also have elevated baseline amounts of ROS and RNS, aka oxidative stress. And these cancer stem cells still rely heavily on this glutamine transporter, SLC7A11, in order to bring in the necessary cysteine to combine with that extra glutamine to make the excess glutathione necessary to protect them from ferroptosis. And what this is highlighting is that sodium butyrate is an effective inducer of ferroptosis through the same mechanisms that we've seen in these highly proliferative cells, which I believe to be fairly exciting because that means we're not just killing the proliferative cells, we're killing it all. And that is obviously the goal, to kill it all. And I think it's worth going over this graphic. So what essentially is happening is, is that butyrate is facilitating an iron sequestration inside these lysosomes. And it's also responsible for, and this is another mechanism, ubiquination of the SLC7A11, and, and ubiquination is a way that cells mark 
particular proteins for destruction, proteasomal destruction. So it's inducing ferroptosis by sequestering iron to participate in the Fenton reaction and induce ferroptosis, but it's also sequestering this ubiquinated SLC7811. So it's being broken down faster than it can be created. And it also contributes to ferroptosis due to the lack of cysteine that is needed by cancer cells. And I think this is an interesting graph here is that we have this control, right? The tumor weight by the control. And we can see that there is about a 27% decrease in tumor weight by just adding butyrate. It's more effective to use the chemotherapy cisplatin. But if you use chemotherapy cisplatin plus butyrate, you even get a more attenuated effect. And cisplatin is a platinum-based chemotherapy that is used in several cancer models. So you can see, this is what we would consider integrative medicine in action, right? This is not shunning the chemotherapy offered by conventional oncologists, but this is augmenting and having synergistic effects with that chemotherapy with something as simple as sodium butyrate. Pretty amazing. And lastly, I wanted to show where butyrate acts in this model that we've looked at now several times. We see butyrate acts here, inhibiting the SLC7A11 transporter via multiple mechanisms by its proteasomal destruction and its attenuation in expression so that it doesn't actually end up on the cell membrane. And then it also activates these lipooxygenase proteins, which then leads to lipid peroxidation and ferroptosis. So it has multiple mechanisms in which it works, which is pretty exciting. And then just to, just to finish out here, remember butyrate is acting upon this SLC7A11 glutamine cysteine antiporter. I hope that you can see now with a certain degree of clarity that we have many tools in our tool bag to add to the therapeutic inhibition of glutamine to help induce ferroptosis to these cancer cells. We also see that this SLC7A11 antiporter is highly upregulated and depended upon by several cancers. So this is fairly conserved despite the type of underlying cancer that one may have, which gives me a lot of hope as this being kind of a universal mechanism and Achilles heel, as some of these papers have shown for cancer as a whole. If you like videos like this, please like, share it with people that may need this information. If you're not a subscriber yet, if you've not joined our mitochondriac army, please subscribe. And until next time.